We have a little bit of light moisture showing up on the radar. Basically, we talked about this yesterday. Thick marine deck up top. We have patchy drizzle being reported around the area. Radar is picking up fairly widespread, which I suspect is mainly drizzle and sandy spring water. And that turns into what could be a, a, a icy mix or some light snowflakes up around Welch's. Uh, here's the scene. You see it's kind of murky out. Cloudy skies, drizzle over downtown right now. 44 degrees is the temperature. So kind of wet for the bus stop this morning. 42 degrees on average. Light uh, winds out there. Mainly dry this afternoon, although drizzle at noon, not impossible. 46 degrees at that time. And with the solid cloud deck, we might get up to 50 this afternoon, guys. Rob, thank you. Oregon school districts are starting to make decisions on whether or not they will keep mask requirements once the state ends its mandate by the end of March. Devin Haskins is joining us live in the newsroom with an update this morning. And Devin, some school districts have already decided they will not require them for students and staff. Yeah, Brenda, multiple school districts have come out and said once the mandate lifts, Masks will be optional, which will be the first time that students and staff that wouldn't be required to wear a mask in a public school since before the pandemic started two years ago. They still have to wait until Oregon's indoor mask mandate ends by March 31st. That's when the state predicts COVID cases and hospitalizations will be lower. The state will not set metrics for districts to use. Instead, it's urging districts to work with local public health agencies to decide what COVID precautions make the most sense for each area. Amity, Newburgh, and Yamhill Carlton school districts have all said masks will no longer be required after the 31st. Other districts we reached out to are taking staff and community input before deciding. We spoke with Am the Amity superintendent who wants to make masks optional even sooner. I sit on the uh, Oregon Small Schools Association board and we represent over 100 districts across Oregon. It's pretty unanimous across those districts that they could like Amity very quickly move into this mode and really don't need the seven weeks. Other districts making the decision, Sherwood, Medford, Ben Lapine and Silver Falls making masks optional once the mandate list uh, lifts. The Malala School District will hold a special meeting on Thursday to discuss the issue. Some of our area's largest districts, though, have yet to make a decision on the matter. Drew. All right, Devin Haskins reporting live in our newsroom this morning. We're also talking about Portland Public Schools in this next story because the district is going to have to pay thousands of dollars in repairs after a thief stole five catalytic converters. Now, they were all taken from district owned vehicles and these photos we're showing you here show the suspect who broke into a locked parking lot last weekend at the Green Thumb facility on Southeast 60th Avenue. The district says repairs will cost Portland Public Schools somewhere between seven and $8,000. Well, the community is coming together to support a 13 year old down in Sweet Home after a group of teens beat him up. And we want to warn you, some of the video is disturbing. It shows 13 year old Gavin Donor being punched and kicked by a group of older teens last Wednesday at Sweet Home High School. His mom, Katie, says he has autism. And when people in and outside of Sweet Home heard what happened on social media, they organized a car parade to show Gavin there are good people in the world who support him. Overwhelmed. <laughs> Overwhelmed. Yeah. We're super grateful for all the support that we've gotten from, you know, especially from Sweet Home, but from everybody, everybody. everybody. I've gotten messages, he's gotten gifts. It blows my mind. Yeah. That's awesome. Gavin's mom says he's starting to feel better, but you can see he still has quite the black eye. Three teens have been arrested so far. The owner of a Southeast Portland restaurant says it's been broken into four times and he hasn't even held the grand opening yet. Ezekiel Gutierrez owns Mikava and Cocina near Mall 205. He says thieves stole thousands of dollars of tools and equipment including three gas heaters, which cost $2,800 a piece. Surveillance cameras recorded one of the suspects in late January. Of course, the cost of these break-ins is a big deal, but what bothers Gutierrez most is the lack of support. He claims authorities aren't doing enough to find the thieves. But people have to do something about it. I mean, all the businesses, the people are losing their business, the livelihoods, the, all the work for the, the lives work. Unfortunately, what's happening to Gutierrez isn't unique. A business advocacy group called Bricks Need Mortar found that about two thirds of its small business clients have been broken into or vandalized over the past year and a half. 
Well, the Oregon wine industry is dealing with supply chain issues and worker shortages just like so many other industries. And that means you might have to pay more for your favorite bottle of wine. We're going to talk about Jeff Lewis here. There he is. He's with Alexano Vineyard and Winter, uh, Winery in Newburgh, and he's one of the speakers at this week's Virtual Oregon Wine Symposium. He's going to speak about some of the issues the industry is facing right now. Like Nina just mentioned, we're talking supply chain issues, worker shortages, and also inflation. Lewis says there is still a lot of demand for wine, but there's just not as much stock as there was before COVID. I think you're going to see a lot of those. Um, about 10, 15 percent increases in a lot of situations. And some people are going to be able to hold their price points just to maintain that you know, unique position within a market where they're competitive. But yeah, for a lot of us, I think our $55 bottles are going to be $60. So buyers want to know when are prices going to go up exactly? Well, Lewis says it's already happening at Alexana. They're charging a couple of dollars more already for certain bottles of their wine. 